This is a 2008 Mercedes CLK 63 AMG Black Series, and it's my favorite AMG car. And that's no easy feat because there are a lot of them to choose from. The market seems to agree with me, though. When these things were new back in 2008, they sold for $136,000. That was the base MSRP. And today, the average asking price for one of these on AutoTrader is just over $80,000. That's really strong resale value, especially for an AMG car. I figured by now I'd be able to pick one of these up for eighteen grand, but that's not the case. By comparison, an S65 AMG from the same era would have cost about $170,000 new, and today it would sell for about as much as a used mattress with only minimal stains. Today I'm going to show you why I love this car so much and why others seem to like it too. To start, a little overview. I always thought the Mercedes CLK lineup was rather hilarious just because it stretches so far from the base level CLK 200 that they offer in Europe with only 134 horsepower, does 0 to 60 in 11 seconds, all the way up to the CLK DTM, which is crazy, and the CLK GTR, which is really crazy. Those are truly race cars for the road. It has to be the widest ranging lineup in the entire history of the car business. Anyway, the Black Series was the craziest of the normal CLK models. It has a 500 horsepower 6.2 liter V8. That's 25 more than the regular CLK 63. It was also made in limited numbers. They only sold it in 2008 and only 367 were sold in the United States and less than 600 were sold across the world. It also had some of the coolest styling of any modern Mercedes. While everyone else is going for bright colors and giant wings and look at me craziness, Mercedes did something unusual for the Black Series. They made a cool, special, expensive sports car subtle. They added a new front bumper and a new rear diffuser. They gave it these awesome flared touring car racer fenders and that's basically it. Normal people who see this on the street would never be able to tell they're looking at something special, but you and I can and that's one of the things I love about it. Today I'm going to give you a tour of the CLK 63 Black Series and show you all the other things I love about it, like its unusual quirks and its cool features. And then I'm going to take it out on the road and find out how this thing drives. And then, of course, I'm going to give it a Doug score. Click the link below to go to autotrader.com slash oversteer for more of my thoughts on the Black Series and for a list of other ultra rare AMG cars currently listed for sale on Autotrader. We start on the inside with one of the Black Series' most unique and odd features, and that would be its shift lever. A normal car shift lever is like eight inches tall, and this one, it's like an inch, and it's just really tidy, and you move it through the gears. It has some weight to it, surprisingly. Another thing that's weird about the shift lever is it's inside these little bristles that are made from the same material as a broom you'd use to sweep your patio. This shift lever is one of the most bizarre things about this car. I have no idea why they made it so small. I think it's to mimic some race car shift lever or something, but to this day, Every time I think about the CLK 63 Black Series, I think cool, beautiful, fast Mercedes, and then I think weird stubby shift lever. And now you will too. Next up, you've heard of flat bottom steering wheels, but how about flat sided steering wheels? The CLK 63 Black Series steering wheel is quite an odd shape. The bottom is flat and the sides, they aren't exactly round either. I wouldn't call this steering wheel square, but it certainly isn't close to circular. Next up, moving on to the front seats, which are some of the strangest I've seen. Now, this car has these really tight, grippy sport seats because it's a high-performance car, and they've gotten rid of a lot of the power functions in order to save weight, but they've left a few of the power functions on the side in the normal place. And then in front of that, there's a little wheel that also has an adjustment. And then in the front of the seat, there's a lever that you can use to move the seat forward and backwards, meaning there are adjustments in three separate places. And then on the side of the seat, next to your right arm, there are more adjustments, power again, for lumbar support. So there are four different places to adjust this seat. It's almost like they thought, well, we can take out all the adjustments. Oh, we got to add one, and now we better add another, and eh, let's add another, and then you end up with this sort of hodgepodge of seat adjustments. You never really remember which one controls which function. Interestingly, in spite of all those adjustments, there's no easy way to get into the back seat. There's no lever you pull that'll just pull the seat forward so you can easily climb in back. Instead, you have to push the power adjustment button and then wait for the seat to move forward, and then you have to reach onto the floor and pull the lever on the floor to move the seat up in order to climb into the back seat. That's annoying to do every time you have to get into the back, right? Well, not quite. I say not quite because unlike every other CLK model, except for the DTM and the GTR, which are basically road legal race cars, the Black Series doesn't have back seats. Mercedes removed them to save weight because this is the performance model, and if you pull the back seats out, you can save weight and make the car go faster. So how much weight did they save? Well, compared to the regular CLK 550 Coupe, this car is... 
four pounds lighter. That's all. See, they removed the back seats to save weight, but then they added the flared fenders and the bigger wheels and all this other stuff, and eventually all that weight just came right back on. So you have the same weight as a regular CLK, but you don't get the practicality of rear seats. So what is behind the front seats in the Black Series? Well, it's actually kind of interesting. The back seats are removed, but in their place are these carpeted holes that sort of resemble seats where you can put stuff if you really want to. In fact, this car ends up having a little bit more cargo room than the standard CLK because it removes the back seats. Other interesting things in the back seats there are air conditioning vents back here and there's a rear ashtray even though there are no seat belts or seats back here for someone to actually use those things i guess mercedes figured it was cheaper to just make one rear center console for the whole clk lineup than create a new one specifically for this car oh and speaking of unusual things you'll find in the back seats how about the fact that there are individual floor mats back there with the amg logo on them even though no one will ever put their feet on them Another interesting thing, the battery is back here. It's under this little plastic panel, and if the battery goes dead on your CLK 63 Black Series, good luck. you got to pry out all sorts of interior trim in order to get to it in between the non-existent seats hidden deep in the back. Now, the good news is there is a jump start area under the hood in the normal spot, so you can jump this car if the battery ever dies. But if the battery is ever completely dead and you have to replace it, good luck with the most inconvenient battery change of your life. Another backseat-related item I find hilarious in this car. Now, from the front seat, you can roll down the front windows and the back windows, like in virtually every car. But the interesting thing about this car is you can also lock out anyone else from being able to roll down the windows. Now, that's also true in most cars, but the weird thing about this car is there are no back seats. So if you lock out people from rolling down the windows, who exactly are you locking out? Not only can no one sit back there, there's not even switches back there to be able to roll the windows down. So I guess you're just locking out the person on the passenger side who doesn't even have control of the rear windows anyway. Another example of a button that they just kept from the regular CLK because it was cheaper instead of making an entirely new one just for the Black Series. Moving on to interior storage. Now, to the right of the center screen and to the left of the glove box, there's a little hidden storage compartment, so hidden that the owner of the car didn't even know it was there. You push it and it pops right out, but it pops out at such an angle that you can't actually see what's inside if you're sitting in the driver's seat. Nonetheless, it's there for your oddly shaped items that you want to hide from people. Next, we move on to the glove box. Now, this is the only car I've ever been in where the automaker tried to make the glove box latch into a styling element. It's hidden in this silver strip that goes across the entire glove box, I don't know, to provide a little bit more attractiveness to the glove box area? Anyway, the latch itself is hidden inside the middle of this silver strip. You open it, and there's your glove box. Now, there are two interesting items you'll find inside the glove box of the Black Series. Number one, inside the glove box lid itself, there's a little hidden silver compartment for more storage. I guess you can put sunglasses in there or business cards. The other interesting thing is the iPod cord. This thing is built into the car. You can't take it out like a USB cord or anything like that. Apparently, Mercedes thought iPods would not advance at all beyond this car. Now, this was the only option on this particular Black Series. It cost $375 extra. The weird thing is, if you attached your iPod or your phone to this cord, you had to then leave it inside the glove box because the wire is too thick for the glove box to close and have the wire outside of it. In other words, you had to choose between listening to your music and plugging your phone into this thing or having your phone outside so that you can use it for directions or changing the song. For all you young people watching, that's how we did music integration in the old days of 2008. Now, I mentioned that that cord in the glove box was this car's only option, and I know that because I have the original window sticker. Now, the original MSRP base of this car was $135,000 with destination. That got it up to $136,000. And then there was a $375 option for the iPod, but the total price of this car was almost $139,000. The reason for that? That's because this car got charged a $2,600 gas guzzler tax. Lest you think that's unfair, the EPA estimated this thing gets 12 city and 19 highway. This isn't a car you want to drive around for efficiency. Next up, back to the interior. Look around, you'll notice there's only one cup holder, even though there's two seats. Ah, but not so fast. The second cup holder is hidden under this little storage lid. One cup holder is visible and one cup holder is hidden, just in case you have a Black Series and you want to lie about how many cup holders you have. I don't know. Now, next up, the Black Series doesn't have heated seats or cooled seats. It lost all that unnecessary luxury stuff in the pursuit of the four pounds of weight savings I mentioned earlier. But what that does mean is the Black Series has rows of blank switches in the center for where all that stuff used to be. And it looked terrible. I hate this stuff. Although, I have to admit, it is kind of cool that the only button in the center, aside from the power locks, is the traction control off. That makes you feel like you're in a real performance car. I just wish they could have figured out another way to get rid of all the blanks. Another 
interesting quirk in this car. Because this is a coupe, the seat belts are pretty far behind you. So when you get in, it's kind of hard to reach for them in order to put them on. This car has a solution. When you push the start stop button, the seat belts are delivered to you on this automatic seat belt delivery system. Put them on and then the system goes away. It's a really cool feature. Now, I've talked about this feature a couple times. Every time I do, people are like, well, my BMW has that. Well, not everybody's been in your BMW, okay? Something else I find rather interesting, now there's a button right here on the driver door panel to open the trunk. Push it, the trunk opens. That's pretty simple, a lot of cars have that, that's not anything special. The weird thing is that button has a little red light on it and it must be attached to some sensor in the trunk because that red light goes on as long as the trunk is open. When you close the trunk, the red light on the driver's door turns off. I've never seen anything like that before. A lot of cars have a little warning in the gauge cluster, hey your trunk is on, but I've never seen one with a little tiny red light on the driver's door. Another interesting thing, that little trunk light will come on regardless of whether you open the trunk from the driver's door or from back here. Open, on, close, off. Open, on, close, off. I don't know why you'd keep doing this, but if you have a black series in your board, you can give it a try. This kind of quirk is something that only 10 of us will appreciate and find interesting, but to the other nine, pretty cool, huh? Now, since I'm back here, a couple of other interesting trunk details, starting with this little warning label on the trunk hinge. It seems to suggest that the trunk can only handle 110 pounds of luggage. That means you can't even have someone sit inside your trunk. You can barely put two full-size suitcases in here before this thing is at its capacity. It's crazy. If the fuel economy doesn't deter you from taking this car on long trips, maybe the trunk's payload capacity will. Another interesting thing back here, look inside the trunk and you will find a giant black bar that goes across the middle of the trunk. That's to stiffen the car, to make it a little sportier, to make it handle a little better, and you won't find that bar on your standard CLK. Something you will find on your standard CLK, however, is a spare tire, and this car has a spare tire well. It also has tire changing tools, so when you get a flat, you go into the trunk, you find your tire tools, and you think, yay, I got a spare, but you don't. Instead, they give you some fix-a-flat. Good luck. Oh, and by the way, that can of Fix-A-Flat, here it is, and it has an expiration date. Every few years it has to be changed as part of the regular servicing of this car. This particular one expired in August 2011, so if the owner of this particular car gets a flat tire, well then, double good luck. Next up, one of my all-time favorite features about the CLK, every CLK, is that it's pillarless, meaning you can have your front window down and then you put the back window down and there's no pillar here, so it feels like this wide open driving experience. I love that. I love how it makes the car look when the windows are down or up. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. It really contributes to the look of this car. Also interesting, because of this car's pillarless window setup, the windows do something a little bit interesting when you go to close the doors. Now, in a lot of sports cars, when you close the door, the window raises just a little bit in order to form a seal with the roof of the car so that water doesn't get in. In this car, the window does that in the front, like in most exotic sports cars, but because there's no pillar here, the back window also has to do it. Watch what I mean. Also interesting, I love that this car's flared fenders, one of the coolest styling elements in this car, makes it look just aggressive enough to separate it from the regular CLK, but they come with a drawback. The owner tells me that because they're flared out a couple of inches, rocks and debris from the front wheels get kicked up and constantly hit the flared fenders back here, so he had to put film on the entire fender in order to protect it. Something to think about if you're interested in a CLK 63 Black Series. Next up, onto the engine of this thing, this massive, mean, 500 horsepower, 6.2 liter V8, but it also hides a secret. This car has a problem with its head bolts. Now, that's an important part within the engine that can fail, and when it does fail, it'll destroy the entire engine. Not that many cars with this motor are affected, but some are, and it's not just the Black Series, E63, S63, every car with the 6.2 liter AMG V8 could potentially be affected. When it does, your entire engine goes and the replacement is something like $50,000 for a new one. Or you could just replace the head bolts prematurely. The cost of doing that is about $4,400. Still not cheap, but a lot better than a new engine. A lot of owners have started to do that, of these cars and of other 63 AMG models. But while that motor may have a grenade lurking inside to destroy it, all is forgiven when you hear it. Take a listen. So those are all the interesting quirks and cool features of the Black Series. Now it's time to get it out on the road and take it for a spin. All right, 
driving the Black Series. This is something I've always wanted to do. I've always kind of wanted one of these. First things first, the ride is very harsh. You can tell that immediately. This is a sports car. They really want you to know it's a sports car and feel it's a sports car, and I do. That is a rough ride. Whoa! I floored it there, and the traction control was jumping so much that it kicked the iPhone off its mount. The owner told me this. He said if you floor it, it really kind of fights against it. But if you turn traction control off, it's just so rascally that you just get scared. The steering at low speeds is really heavy. Uh, now that I move, I'm going about 40, it feels normal. But at low speeds, it really feels like you're doing some work. This car has power steering, but apparently not much. Man, going around tight corners, this thing is really, really capable. Whoa, I can't believe how quickly it changes directions for a 10-year-old car. I drive a lot of 10-year-old cars, and I'm used to making excuses for them. Oh, well, it's, only, it's 10 years old, so it can't be expected. This thing is sharp. Wow. Wow, but it's, it's very fast. Uh, and it gets a little squirrely. It gets a little squirrely. <laughs> uh, when you floor it, it kind of gets, it does it, straight line flooring, it is not the thing that happens in this car, which is a little bit, a little bit unnerving. It's very precise. It really feels, when you're driving this car, you'll understand what I'm talking about if you're driving something really, really good like this. When you're driving this car and you move the steering wheel, it feels like the whole thing moves as one unit. The SLR, I remember driving, and it felt very heavy, and it felt almost like the front was moving at a different rate than the rear. This thing feels like you're almost driving a circle and you're in the middle of it. Like, it all is just moving at the exact same pace. Very impressive. The sound is great, although I think the newer AMG cars, it sounds even more drastic. I'm in sport mode, there's no exhaust button, so this is as good as it gets. Uh, and I think the new AMG cars are even more throaty and mean. I think exhaust, they've, the automakers have taken more and more liberties with them over the years. But man, it bumps you around. It also bumps you around like one unit. I love how this car handles. I can't believe how well it handles. It just feels as sharp as any exotic I've driven on. I mean, the center of gravity is higher and the steering is a little lighter, I admit. It's no Ferrari in that sense, but it actually isn't that far behind. This is a great car for these back roads. I'm stunned. Every time I get in a Mercedes performance car and it actually performs like a true sports car, I'm shocked because in my estimation, Mercedes is a company that just throws big engines in their normal cars. This car has actually been tuned to drive like a, uh, a good back roads performer. Who knew? Okay, that was maybe a little much, although I wasn't going over 40 there. I went around a corner and pushed it a little bit and the tail started to come out. I don't know what the status of the tires is in this car, but I have traction control on. I'm petrified to turn it off. Um, this, is, this thing is crazy. You can have some serious fun in this car. And you can get into some serious trouble, clearly. Wow, really quick really quick, tons of mid-range. I love my, my bi-turbo AMG car, but uh, these old naturally aspirated engines just have power at every little bit and they just have endless torque and I love that. I, I don't have to really stand the throttle very far to get going exactly how fast I want to get going. For 80 grand, which is what these are going for now, this is one of my new favorites. Truly, maybe my, maybe my new favorite. It's not a, quite as quick as a, as a GT3 around corners and stuff, but I love how it looks, and I like the sound, and I like the big V8, and uh, it just seems tossable. I, I would give any, this is the first car where I really feel like I would give anything to take it to an airport or a runway or a racetrack and just bomb around and slide around and do power slides like Chris Harris. Usually I just want, oh, I want to drive and see how it is. Oh, how does it feel in traffic? I don't want to drive this thing in traffic. I, I would do, take this thing on back roads for the rest of my life if I could. <laughs> it's so much fun. And so that's the CLK 63 Black Series. With only 367 of these sold in the United States, this car is ultra rare. It's also absolutely beautiful, just gorgeous. And it's full of interesting quirks and cool features, and it's a lot of fun to drive. It's also a lot more subtle than a Ferrari or a Lamborghini, more under the radar, which I absolutely love. I love the Black Series, and I only wish these things would come down in price, because then I could afford to buy one. Anyway, on to the Doug score. 
Starting as always with the weekend category and styling, I have to commend the CLK 63 Black Series for its amazing flared fenders and its simple, subtle shape that doesn't beg for recognition from every other driver on the road. The flared fenders, the wheels that perfectly fit its character, it's perfect, or almost perfect, as the design loses a point for still recalling a lot of the regular humdrum CLK, and it earns a 9 out of 10. Acceleration, the CLK 63 Black Series does 0 to 60 in 4.1 seconds, earning it a 7 out of 10. Handling is awesome, and it's not as precise as the very best cars, but it's so much more tossable and fun to throw around. It gets an 8 out of 10, and it maybe isn't as quick or as sharp as some of the other cars with this score, but it's more joyous. Cool factor is strong, but not amazing. It's a fun car, and I always stop and look when I see one, but most people would never bat an eyelash, and it gets a 7 out of 10. Finally, importance. It's an important car in the sense that it's a rare Mercedes, but ultimately it's not even the best CLK. That honor goes to the CLK GTR, and really it's not even the second best is that's the CLK DTM. It's cool, it's special, but it's not on a level of the very best, and it gets a 7 out of 10. That brings the total weekend score to 38 out of 50, which is quite impressive for a car from this price range. On to the daily score and features, the Black Series has some good stuff, but with no sunroof and no ventilated seats and that crazy iPod cord, it's not going to get better than a 4 out of 10. Comfort is decent, it's a rough ride, but it has nice, comfortable leather seats and gets a 5 out of 10. Quality is good, the interior material materials are nice and the car is high quality, but the head bolt issue under the hood prevents this car from really excelling in this category and it gets a 6 out of 10. Practicality is acceptable, it's 10.4 cubic feet of trunk space, it's better than virtually all other exotic sports cars, but two seats and horrible fuel economy means it won't go above a 3 out of 10. Finally, value. Take a look back at the weekend category and you'll realize that this is the first car in its price range to score anywhere near this high. The Black Series may be expensive, but it's also a total thrill, tremendously rare and really fast, and it gets a 9 out of 10, stopping just short of a perfect score because of the pricey engine head bolt issue. That brings the total daily score to 20 27 out of 50, placing it near the middle of the 60 cars I've rated so far. Add it up and the total Doug score is 65 out of 100, which is a strong showing and it places the Black Series ahead of some legends, including Mercedes' own SLR. Now you can see why this is my favorite AMG car.